Hello, welcome to today's live. Um, so what I'd like to do is talk a bit about VAWA today, what it means, what kind of petition it is, when you can use it. And then after, I'll answer whatever questions you guys might have. I'll go through it one by one. So when you log on and you have questions, just put it and I'll, I'll scroll back and get back to you when, when I'm done explaining about VAWA. So what is VAWA? What, why that immigration topic for today? <clears throat> well, while there are some exceptions, the vast majority of VAWA applications are when a U.S. citizen is or a lawful permanent resident is married to a foreign national, and the bottom line is that the foreign national is being abused, okay? Being abused either physically or being abused emotionally. And the question always arises, especially with the person from the foreign country, should they stay in an abusive relationship? Because if they don't, they know they're probably going to get deported. They won't have any chance of getting the green card. And they basically their whole dreams are going to be shot to heck. So what do they do? What does someone in an abusive relationship do who is married to a U.S. citizen or lawful permanent resident? Well, the law allows them to be able to do the, uh, you know, this type of uh, marriage petition if you don't have to, um, you know, go through with it and you can still get the green card. And so how, how is that done? Okay, how is it done that you can essentially still get the green card, be married to a U.S. citizen, and not have to do a marriage petition? Okay, so the VAWA petition is exactly what it means. It's Violence Against Women Act. And just so you know, I've done several VAWAs for men okay, uh, for severe emotional abuse. And I've actually done a couple for physical abuse as well. So I know the title of it is Violence Against Women's Act. But in the reality is, is that VAWA can be used for men or women. Okay, so what happens? How do you do it? Okay, so you get in a relationship, you start getting abused, and you fear... Uh, you know, being hit again or whatever it is. So the abusive person can move out, doesn't have to stay with, you know, the spouse who's abusing him or her, and then can file the VAWA petition on their own. They do not need any help from the other spouse. They don't need a signature. They don't need agreement. They don't need papers. They need nothing. I mean, the VAWA petition itself needs to have proof and so forth. But they need the other spouse, the one who's abusing them, not to provide anything. In fact, the law is so strict on this that if the abused, the, the, you know, the spouse who's abusing decides to call immigration and say, hey, this spouse that says I'm hitting them, they're lying. They're just doing it because they want the green card and they're just trying to get me in trouble. They're just lying. The adjudicator cannot, by law, take any information that the abusive spouse is saying. Okay, that's, that's the reality. So it's all on the burden and it's all on the proof and necessity of have to do what's necessary in order to properly file the petition, okay? So what is it that is needed, all right? Um, obviously, you have to prove you're married to a U.S. citizen or lawful permanent resident. Obviously, you have to prove that there's been physical abuse or severe emotional abuse. Now, I can tell you that with the majority of petitions that I file with VAWA, I also have the person who's been abused go to a psychiatrist or psychologist in order to, you know, ferret out the story of what's happened. Because a lot of times if there's physical abuse, there's also emotional abuse. It's, it's hard to have one without the other. 
although you can certainly have emotional abuse without physical abuse. That, that happens. So what happens is they prepare, the psychologist will prepare a report showing what happened, and it just adds veracity you know, to the, the story itself. So that shows the abuse. Now, what else do you have to show? Well, the big thing, of course, you have to show is the abuse cured in America. Okay, you can't have been abused in France and then come to America and file a VAWA petition. Okay. It, the relationship itself had to be bona fide. Okay, that's a key issue. You know, the, the reality is you might have been abused up and down, backward and forward, physical and mental, but if the marriage itself was not bona fide, was not real, was not, and by real, I mean for purposes of love, not just to get the green card, then the vow is never going to be approved. So let me, let me explain. Let's say that you met somebody, okay? Let's say that you met somebody and what happens is three days later you get married, Okay? Because you're saying, wow, this is a U.S. citizen, I'm going to get married. And you find out the person's not who you thought and you get beaten. Okay, that's never going to work because that was not a real marriage. Okay, you only did it to get the green card. Okay, um, so as part of the VAWA petition itself, you have to prove the bona fides of the marriage in the first place. Okay, so to recap, bona fides of the marriage, that there was abuse whether it's physical and or mental, and it has to be severe emotional, which the psychi- psychologist can always help with that, you know, firming up the reasons why and so forth. The abuse had to occur in America, and you have to be legally married. Okay, now, it, and, and you remember when I said you don't have to provide anything from the person who's abusing you? Well, you have to prove the person's a U.S. citizen or a lawful permanent resident. Now, let's say you left the house, Okay, because you're, you know, you're obviously being beaten and you're not going to sit there and look for papers while you're being beaten. So you left the house and you have no evidence, nothing to show that you married a U.S. citizen. Well, there's ways of doing it. Okay, there's derivative ways of doing it. I mean, you had to get married somewhere. There's a marriage certificate filed somewhere that shows this person's a U.S. citizen. USCIS will have records. Passport records will have records. There's ways of getting evidence and things that are needed without having to ask the person to do it. Okay? So there's ways of doing that. Now, what's the burden of proof on a VAWA petition? And what does burden of proof mean? Burden of proof means, you know, how hard do you have to prove that you were abused to win? Okay? Now, normally... With typical immigration petitions, it's a fairly decent amount of proof, okay? You you really have to show quite a bit. And, you know, that's sort of a non-legal way of saying the reality. With vowel petitions, it's less. The burden of proof is less. And why do they do that? Why do they make it easier to prove a vowel petition than it would be, for example, a regular marriage petition? Why? Because they do not want to make it difficult for somebody who's being abused to walk away. The policy is do not stay in a relationship that you're being abused so you get the green card. Okay? Lots of bad stuff can happen. So the burden of proof is easier on a VAWA petition than others. Now, that doesn't mean it's easy. Don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean it's easy. But it's easier. Okay? Which is a great thing. Now, when it says severe emotional abuse, what's that mean? Okay. Um, you know, d- d- if, if they say one time, um, you know, if you don't give me money, money petitions where that's the threat. So if they're going to deport, okay, if they're going to threaten that. That's one thing. And that by itself might not be severe emotional abuse. But the law says you can aggregate all of the different elements over a significant period of time, put it all together and show all of that makes severe emotional abuse. So, you know, if three times a day they threaten to deport you, if they use financial, you know, threats, you know, twice a week, if they don't let you go out, you know, to see your friends, if they do other kinds of threats, you know, when you add all these things up, it, it, 
very much leads to severe emotional abuse. That's why when my firm, for example, is preparing declarations on this, we prepare very detailed declarations. There's some people who think a vow petition, you just snap your fingers, you say, I was abused, thanks, bye, give me the green card. It doesn't work like that, okay? You, you, of course, you have to prove it, okay? So what happens if you're doing a VAWA petition and you're, you're inadmissible on some reason, okay? Um, excuse me, like happens with a lot of different other kinds of um, petitions. Well, you know, if you have a criminal history or you have something else, you have to do a waiver. Same thing. You have to do a waiver to get over it. So, you know, doing a VAWA petition by itself does not immediately make it so that you uh, can get the green card if it's approved. It has to be approved and you have to be shown to be admissible, okay? But you can get waivers. Now, let's say you entered the country illegally. Let's say you entered the country illegally fraudulently, okay? And normally, you couldn't get out of that. Normally, there's no way. Well, if you can show that it was related to the, you know, battering, to the abuse, then that will be waived, okay? So, for example, you know, if your uh, abusive spouse said, you tell them you're a U.S. citizen and so we can get through here, and if you don't, I'm going to beat you, okay? If, if that's the reason you went and you said you were a U.S. citizen when you went to the border, well, that can be waived, okay? So, uh, there, there's ways of getting around this. So, um, you'll be able to file, if done properly, a VAWA petition without being with your abusive spouse by yourself, uh, and, you know, be able, if everything goes well, to get the green card. And I, I, you know what's sad to me? A lot of times the people will call me and they'll say, well, he only hit me once. Uh, I don't know if I qualify. Well, there's no to qualify for VAWA, okay? It doesn't say in the law, he must hit you five times in order to qualify because the first four times, well, that doesn't really matter. No, that, that's not how it works. If you are physically abused one single time, then you can apply for the VAWA, okay? Doesn't mean you'll be approved. You still have to prove it all. But you don't have to wait until you're, you know, uh, lying in a hospital bed uh, with stitches in order to apply, okay? That's not the purpose. Again, the whole purpose is to get out of the abusive relationship before it gets so bad that you wish you had gotten out of it, Okay. So that's what the law allows. That's what VAWA allows. Okay, so hopefully that clears up uh, some issues with VAWA. So let me let me scroll back through all these things here and see if we have any, um, you know, quick questions here. Um, just a second. Well, we have a lot of people that joined. I don't see a lot of questions yet. Just a minute. If anybody has any questions, let me know. Um, all righty. Wow. I mean, I'm just scrolling. I don't see the questions right here. Maybe I'm scrolling too fast. <laughs> okay. Um, well, anyways, hopefully, hopefully you guys understood, uh, you know, what I'm telling you about the VAWA, how it works, how you can use it, how you can apply, when you can apply, why you can apply, and so forth. Um, it is a very misunderstood, uh, you know, form of relief. And believe it or not, a lot of laws in immigration law, they have policies. I mean, most of them have policies behind them. There's reasons they have them. So the whole reason for VAWA is to protect the abused spouse, okay? Whether, you know, uh, immigrant or not, uh, to, to protect them, to make sure that things like this don't happen, okay? So um, that basically is going to do the live for today. Um, if any of you have any other questions or issues, just go ahead and um, just go ahead and let me know. You know, you can just type your, your questions here um, or you can email me or you can message me on TikTok. I have numerous ways that you can contact me in order to try to help you. And I can tell you right now, there's nothing you can ask me in immigration that I won't be able to tell you. Okay, that's the truth. Um, so here we have questions. I, I scrolled down like 300 and now I got some questions. Um, is it true VAWA takes one year? Um, sometimes it takes less, sometimes it takes more. 
Um, you know, if you submit a junky VAWA application, you're going to get an RFE, a request for evidence, which is going to extend it. And then, it, you know, it may get denied. Um, so it, it, it depends. You can't be so concentrated on how long it takes. Okay. That whenever people ask me that, it's like, I think they're under the assumption for sure they're going to get approved. And that is not the case. The more important thing is to submit the VAWA application in the best manner it can be. You know, we do it for cover letter, declarations, affidavits, exhibits, supporting declarations, uh, if there's uh, ones from friends and things like that, the psychologist report, you know, all that. I mean, it's a complete, full thing with argument. Um, you know, then if it goes there, and then if it takes a long time, too long, realistically, past the norm, then you can deal with the status inquiries. Okay, so, I mean, a year is a good benchmark. Okay, if it takes longer than that, then then you should, you know, do an inquiry. But make sure the application's done well in the first place. How does it work? Well, that's what the whole 15 minutes has been about. So, um, bottom line, you get, abu- you get married, you get abused, you get out, and you file. Okay, um... So you've applied, here's another one. I've applied immigration visa for my brother. Can I apply for his visitor visa before his immigrant visa? Well, that depends, okay? The whole purpose of a visitor visa is they have the intention to leave the country before, you know, once it expires, okay? So if you applied for your brother 20 years ago and it's six months from becoming current and now he wants to get a visitor visa to come here, that's never going to work. They won't believe it because when he comes here, it's going to be current and he can just adjust status. On the other hand, if you applied from a year ago and there's another 19 years to wait, well, they're not going to make you wait 19 years to visit your brother or for him to visit you just because he's waiting for the visa number to become current. And obviously the argument is, well, you know, I'm not going to stay in the U.S. for 19 years while I have a family and a uh, business and, you know, finances and a house and all this back home. So it, it all depends on timing. So I would say the longer you applied for your brother go, the less chance there is, the sooner, the better. Okay. Can, whoops, I, I just scrolled past like a bunch of questions. Just a minute. Um, just a minute. Um, okay. Can a citizen prevent his partner from applying for citizenship? No, no. He has no, absolutely no basis to do that. There's no jurisdiction. There's no standing. When a person applies for citizen, citizenship, they qualify or they don't. Okay, they put the arguments. If they don't qualify, they don't. Now, now I assume the basis of this question is you know that the citizen has done something bad and you don't think that the um, immigration knows about it. There's nothing stopping you from preparing a proper declaration. Like, let, let's say, for example, I'll exaggerate. Let's say, for example, because they pretended that they were someone they were not, okay? And it all went through, immigration never knew, and you found out about it. And now they want to apply for citizenship and become a citizen. Well, you can inform legally immigration of this, and then they can take the proper path and move forward if they want to, you know, revoke the green card or denaturalize or things like that, okay? But as far as, you know, you saying you cannot apply for an N-400, that, that's not going to happen, okay? Um, let's see. I had a second interview N-400, first one I passed. Should I prepare for civics questions again? Well, I understand you say the first one you passed, but if you passed it, why do you have a second interview? There's something that you didn't pass. If you passed it, you'd be having the notice for the swearing-in ceremony, okay? So there's something you did not pass. You might have already passed the civics part of it, but there's an issue Okay, they do not call people back for second interviews without an issue. I don't know what the issue is. Okay, uh, I don't know how you got the green card. Maybe you didn't get the green card properly. Maybe they found a, some criminal history that you didn't disclose. Maybe they feel that you committed some kind of fraud. Maybe you didn't answer something truthfully. Maybe whatever it is. Um, I'll be honest with you. You should have an, a, law, a lawyer that goes with you. They are not. <laughs> they are not there to bring you back to a second interview to say hello. They've got 600,000 people in front of you and behind you. They do not need to waste their time with a second interview to say hello if everything was already passed. So there is an issue. 
okay? You should have a lawyer with you to protect you, okay? That's the reality. Um, just so you know, sometimes I'll go into an interview with a client. I don't have to say a single thing, but they know the fact that the lawyer's in there stops them from going off left edge, okay? And, and getting on issues that they should never have the right to do. Um, okay, I uh, submitted a VAWA November 23 and 24. March, I got a work authorization and travel documents. That's good one where they deemed it to be bona fide okay they, they deemed the application itself to be sufficient that um they didn't have to just flat out dismiss it okay it, it means it hasn't been approved yet um and they're working on it but uh you sh you should be able to hopefully get the approval soon now it's been quite a while so if you don't hear soon uh you might want to uh, do a formal inquiry okay so let's see what else um, okay, well, I think, oh, it's been six months. Okay, well, that's not that bad. I, I mean, you know, six months in immigration law is nothing, okay? I mean, realistically. I mean, for you, it's a long time, but for immigration, it's nothing. It's like them opening the book. Um, all right, well, I hope everybody has enjoyed the live. If everybody wants to give me a, a heart, uh, give me some points, <laughs> that'd be cool. Just boom, 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 real quick. Um, maybe I get up to 1500. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed the live. Um, I basically do it once a week on different subjects. You see my format, I get up and I do a subject, uh, for, you know, 10, 15 minutes and then I start answering questions. Uh, cause I, I think the subjects are important. Uh, you know, a lot of people benefit from it. Um, and then, you know, as far as the consults go, I give consults all the all the time on different formats. You just log on and you'll see how to how it's done. All right. Well, everybody have a good day, and I will see you on the next live.